What's up, Internet? This is Bobby. Welcome back to my humble 3D modeling studio. On the bench today, I've got this quarter-scale Magneto statue from 3D Wicked. I will put a link to their Patreon in the description below. Uh, you should really consider checking them out because they make some really cool stuff, like this Magneto statue that I have made for you and your eyeballs. So um, if you're interested in making 3D models and you want to know how I made this bad boy, stay tuned. Let's get into it. All right, so starting with this big box of parts here, I like to begin with the sanding of the cape because it is going to be the most uh, difficult thing to do. And I like to begin with the most difficult things. I, I don't know why, but after I got it all sanded and glued together, I went in with this plastic putty and a little water to dilute it. So that it just kind of runs into the gaps and kind of fills the gaps a little easier. Um, I did the same for the rocks, uh, went through and you know, picked out all of the little support structures and anything that's left, and then went in and sealed uh, any gaps in the rocks. After a quick wipe down of my station, because a clean station is a happy station, I took a look at the body parts to see what kind of work they would need. So some light uh, support structure sanding and uh, support removal. But for the most part, the bodies fit together uh, quite nicely without needing to be sealed. So I opted to not uh, close those gaps. Um, all of the seams fell on natural sort of dividing lines and um, it was a very, very well put together model. So um, no gap filling of the body parts. And after all of the work, sanding and prepping, here is the dry fit assembly of the model. It's looking awesome, and I think we are ready to go on to priming. Let's get these parts back in the spray booth for some black primer. I like to use the Vallejo uh, black uh, for priming, primarily the black. Sometimes I'll use the white or the gray, just obviously depends upon what uh, character I'm doing. But in this case, I wanted everything to be kind of dark and rich, so I went to black primer. Um, the Vallejo primer is great. It has some kind of self leveler flattener something on there because it, uh, it really flattens out nicely and uh, gives a nice even finish uh, for the paint to, to sit on with the pieces all primed we are ready for some paint i like to lay all my paint out just so i can sort of see the palette see what i'm working with and i know i'm going to be testing some colors uh, for the metal parts um, the purple, I've, I've pretty much settled on the chrome base and then the pearlized purple. Um, but for the red part of the helmet, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do the chrome with the transparent red or the pearlized red. And um, so it, it really helps to be able to test these colors um, on spoons um, before you put them on the model. Because um, it turns out actually I changed my mind after I got it on the model anyway. Um, and we'll see that shortly. So with the colors picked, let's get started. I like to start painting from the bottom up. So that means I started with the plinth and gave it a real light dry brushing of the plate mail silver from Army Painter. And I went in and then base coated the rocks with a London gray and an ash gray from uh, Vallejo. Um, after the gray had dried, I went in and uh, after I sealed it, of course, because you do need to seal before you start washing, um, I went in and started washing the rocks with uh, different sepias and you know, different browns and little blue, some different, some different colors in there because you know, rocks aren't meant to be one color. They're, they look pretty boring. And I wanted these rocks to have some warmth to them, so um, that's why I went with some more of the brown washes versus the black wash. Um, there were a couple little concrete looking bits and uh, those I did try to use mostly the black wash around those. Um, but um, overall I wanted the rocks to have a little more warmth um, to them to kind of work with the reds and the purple uh, in, in Magneto a little bit. Um, once the rocks were, once I had the rocks washed um, to a nice color that I liked, I sealed it again and then gave it a nice dry brush of the ash gray primarily just to kind of catch the edges of the rocks and uh, you know, bring them back to life. Then I went in and painted the rebar pieces 
with a rust color and uh, copper to uh, make those little rebar pieces stand out a little bit. And uh, we can set the base aside and move on to the body paint. I started with the cape and gave it a base coat of Vallejo purple and the body a base coat of the vampire red. And once the vampire red had dried and I gave it a seal, I went in and started to do some shading. So I used the wash in the airbrush to uh, just to get into all the little cracks and crevices and um, you know just kind of start adding some shadows into the you know the darker recesses of the body parts. Then I once that was dry, I went in and with the pure red from Vallejo started to go back in and highlight some of the muscles um, his chest and you know all little ripply muscle bits to add a little highlight to those so that uh, it kind of gives it some nice depth to the model and um, doesn't look so flat and boring Once I had the red where I wanted it to be and gave it a seal to lock that in, then I went in to start the base coat of the purple uh, with a brush. And I really hate masking, so there would have been a lot to mask off, so the brush was the way to go with this. I started with the trim around the boots and then worked my way up the body. Um, the trim on the arms and then finally his little purple underpants why he has on underpants on the outside of his clothes we don't know but there they are and while I'm waiting for his little underpants to dry I went in and added some black wash to the cape uh, started shading in some of that um, shaded in around the boots and the gloves a little bit with the wash since I had it out and then I realized that his neck cowl thing also needed to be painted purple so I went back in and trimmed around that, his cowl, and base coated that in purple as well, and set that aside to dry for a couple minutes. So I wanted to give the gloves and boots a little bit more of a, a leathery look, so I dry brushed them with a Grimoire Purple. Um, just to kind of bring out the textures, the, the kind of leathery texture in the purple because, you know, purple leather, uh, I guess, comes from purple cows. I, I, I don't know why we would have purple leather, but he has purple leather, so that's what I did. Then I, while I had the Grimoire purple out, I dry brushed the top of the cape to kind of give it a little uh, voluminousness and, um, yeah, just kind of bring out a little bit of light. Uh, source lighting from from up above and uh, really make the folds of the cape kind of stand out a little better so doing some detail work now I broke out my trusty number three brush and some black wash to go around the trim parts of the body the gauntlets the leather straps um, some other little leather details uh, just to kind of break up the purple so there's nice dark purple and light purple and then I like to go around the where the materials come together so like where the red meets the purple where the metal meets the leather um, and just give it a, a trace of uh, of the wash and in the seams and stuff I think it really just makes those little details kind of really stand out Moving on to the metalwork on the piece, I first masked off the face of the in the helmet uh, with a little bit of silly putty. Because it's not silly. Uh, I mean, unless it tells you silly jokes or something. But it's putty that I like to use for masking because it's really easy to uh, remove later, and uh, it's just easy to work with. So after I got the face masked off, I base coated the helmet in a gloss black, and I went through with a brush and base coated all the other metal parts with the gloss black.
The next step in the metal process is adding a layer of chrome. I use the Vallejo Metal Color Chrome. Um, I really love this stuff. It spreads evenly. It flows off the brush nice. It doesn't leave any brush marks or anything in the in the model. And um, it's the perfect base for tinting uh, with the red and the purple, which uh, I'm about to do next. And so now it's starting to get good. We're putting on some pearlized purple. Um, I don't know, Createx, I think is the brand name. I, I don't really use these paints that often but they do come in handy for things like this. Um, the pearlized purple over the chrome really gives it a nice tinted metal look um, in, and it's perfect for uh, Magneto. I did leave on the side of his boots and um, on the on the inner part of his gauntlets I did leave those kind of pieces as chrome just to kind of break it up a little bit um, you know to add a little more interest in the piece. Um, but I mean, even if I had made them all, you know, the purple chrome, it still would look awesome. So I'm happy with how it turned out. All right, so now I've got the metal all shiny and new, and uh, I, I don't want it to be new. I, I want it to, to be a little, little old. I want it to have some age because, you know, this stuff has been with Magneto for a while and he's, uh, he's seen some stuff. So I went in with a panel liner, a uh, panel liner ink. Um, I love this stuff because it just flows really nicely. And I added that to the little um, creases and corners and just kind of let it run, um, you know, along the edges of the purple metal um, just to kind of give it a little grime, you know, give it a little build up in the, in the corners. And uh, it's just a really nice effect. It also helps separate, um, you know, the, the metal bits a little bit um, where they're going to have a natural a specular highlight from from the light hitting them but um, not so much shadow and so uh, I don't want to saturate it with shadow either so this panel liner is great because it adds just a subtle separation and, and a hint of a shadow in all those little corners so remember the spoon tests I did at the beginning yeah, so I settled on what I thought was going to be the red uh, for the helmet, which was going to be a transparent red over chrome. And I actually did it, but after looking at it, it was just it was just too bright. Red, the red was just way, way, way too bright. So I went and I blacked the helmet out again with the gloss black, and for forego, forewent, I did not put on the layer of chrome and just put on a layer of the pearlized red on the black and that gave me the metallic maroon kind of color that I was going for uh, at the end and uh, I, I really i am so glad that I changed my mind and, uh, and did that extra work. Once I was satisfied with the red on the helmet it was time to remove the putty mask and start working on the portrait. So for the first layer of skin tone I like to apply a purple wash to the deep recesses on the face. So in the eye sockets, around the eyelids, uh, in the nose, and the creases in the cheeks, uh, the lips, the chin, basically anywhere there's sort of a, a crease um, or a, a deep uh, spot in the face. I want to give a, a little bit more attention with the purple wash and then kind of dab off um, some of it with a, a sponge so it gives it a more kind of a natural um, effect uh, of, of breaking up you know the, the tint on the skin so the more regular it looks you know the more natural it looks so that kind of helps with that. Once the purple wash is dry I apply a thin uh, coat of satin varnish and that just seals in the purple tint so that it is not reactivated by the red tint which is the next step. So while the varnish layer is drying, I mixed up a red wash with an army painter pure red and a whole lot of water. Applying the red wash to the face is the same as the purple it, in the same places in the kind of the deeper recesses and then around the eyes and the lips and the nose. I dry with the with a hair dryer in between applications of red so that I can apply a little bit more and kind of build, I want to build up the red skin tones a little bit more uh, in the pockets and places and on the lips 
um, where you know there's going to be a little more of a redder, uh, you want more of a red tint. I like doing a red tint on the lips um, without doing a pink or anything like that, um, especially for, for male characters. It's more of a natural uh, red lip uh, using the tinting method. So in between stages, I try to dry it either by blowing on it or using a uh, heat gun um, just to quickly dry the layers of red in between. And once I'm happy with where the red tint is, I have to seal that as well. Um, so again, to not activate the red layer once I apply the yellow layer coming up. So while that varnish layer is drying, I wanted to go ahead and base coat the hair. So I used a Vallejo Ash Gray on the hair and the eyebrows. And so the last step is applying a yellow wash. Uh, really it's just on the highest points on the skin and uh, anywhere that the uh, red might have gotten a little too dark. Um, the yellow kind of draws it back uh, into a, an, a warmer skin tone. Um, you know, and this last step really just completes, um, you know, a really nice uh, skin tone in my opinion. I think it's a really, it's a good process and, um, you know, it's a bit laborious having to seal between each layers, but um, I think it really creates a nice effect and it's a process that I'm finally happy with. So moving on to the details of the face, I started with the eyes and I added a little ash gray, but then I wanted to give it a little more depth, so I went back in with a, a little brighter, kind of an off-white, and um, I don't really have to worry about color, the color parts of his eyes, the, the cornea or iris, or whatever. I, I'm not an optometrist, I don't know what I'm talking about, but he doesn't have any color in his eyes, so uh, that makes it pretty simple. Once that was done, I moved on to uh, dry brushing uh, the, the hair um, and getting that a little more uh, depth and giving that a little more attention um, before moving on to the trim around the helmet. Um, it's at this point I'm realizing that I don't really have a good camera angle on this and I apologize but take my word I am coating the trim of the helmet in a gloss black. Um, just like the other metal parts that I've done previously. I moved on to the second step of the metal process, which is the Vallejo Chrome layer. Um, and after that dried, it was time to apply the pearlized purple to give it that final purpley metal look. And so for the final step, I apply a little bit of gloss to the eyes and the lips to give them an appearance of having some moisture. I, I like the word moisture. I, I know a lot of people don't, but, uh, but I, I like saying moist. So with that, we call this model done. <laughs> So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, I live stream all of my paint sessions, so like and subscribe so you can be notified when I'm online. You can listen to some lo-fi, hang out, chit-chat. It's a great time. Till then, take it easy.